Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 42 of my Iron Man Age of Ultron inspired Hulkbuster cosplay, which I've got just here. I've been working on this for quite a while. It's going to be exhibited at Nerdageddon and Defcon 4 in Southampton in the UK. And in fact, if you're watching this video when it comes out on the Tuesday, the event's actually already happened, so I'm making this in the past, because obviously I need to get ready for the event. So I've been working on the panels and things on the front of this suit. Last time I worked on the rest of the legs. I've been working on the shoulders and the helmet in previous episodes to get this looking good so it can be exhibited. And if we're lucky, I might be able to get into it as well. So look out for that vlog, which will be coming out hopefully this Friday. So today we've got a bit of tidying up to do. It's the last episode before I actually take it down to DEF CON. So we've got some electronics to do and some other bits and pieces and hopefully we can get this into an exhibitable state. But before I work on that, I'm going to tell you about a new project that I'm going to be working on soon. Hulkbuster is going to get finished, but I'm going to start another project. So I've been doing some other projects in my channel as well, if you've been watching them. My R6 droid, which is entirely 3D printed. I've quite enjoyed that because it's a robot with lots of mechanics and mechanisms and things like that in and quite a lot of coding. I've also have my alien xenomorph suit, which is pretty much complete as well. So I know how much people like to watch Iron Man projects, but I don't really want to do another Iron Man suit. So I'm going to work on another character. So the new project is going to be called Project Ultron. And um, quite a few people have done some quite good Ultron costumes. So I don't really want to do a costume. Now an Iron Man suit is actually a suit that you wear. So it makes sense that that's a costume that you can wear. It's a cosplay. But Ultron isn't really a cosplay. It's a robot. There's no one inside. So I'm going to build a real robot. I've built quite a few near human sized walking machines in the past. Uh, these ones are made of wood and they're around five feet tall. And I built these back in 2005 or 2006, long before most people had 3D printing. There wasn't much in the way of code and there wasn't really any dynamic stability. So um, I've progressed on and um, got round to Android 12, which was fairly recent. You can see that in my YouTube channel, and that one is entirely 3D printed. Although a bit wobbly, the motors are a bit underpowered, and it really needed a bit more processing power and some better inertial measurement units to balance. So I'm not sure if Ultron's going to be a human-sized walking machine. I want to try and do more coding um, and also make my own servos with 3D printed gears and so on. So each servo is likely to have its own processor running its own PID control with its own serial protocol. But I'd like to do some stuff that's a bit more puppeteered, perhaps with a motion capture suit. But I'd also like to put my own AI in the middle of the motion capture and the robot itself and use vision recognition and other things to recognise faces. So um, in the movie Age of Ultron, the brain was a kind of big blue floating thing in the air. So I'd like to build something like that as well out of a 3D printed frame, lots of Arduinos and lots of blue LEDs that flash all over it so you can see it thinking. So part one of that will be coming up in a couple of weeks where I'll be discussing this in more detail and looking at some motion capture equipment. So check out that video, but for now we're going to get on and finish Hulkbuster. Here's one of the legs and we worked on the putting these panels on and painting them last time. I had a little bit of tidying up to do around here, so I'm going to make a section to just um, trim off that foam, and that's really the last part that needs to be made. The back of the leg is a completely different story. Um, there's no panels at all or anything on here. I have got this mechanism which was to shut the back door, which hinges out quite nicely, but obviously there's no back panel on here. Um, that was going to be cable driven. So I'm probably going to take this off. Um, it just unscrews from the wood, so I can actually get this in a van and take it down to DEF CON. If I have to walk in it, it's not really annoying shaking around in the back. So we're going to remove this. I've also got some wires hanging out, and these are to power the repulsor in the knee, which lights up, but I never wired those into anything. And I can't actually remember what voltage it runs on, so I need to test it on 5 volts first and see how it goes, and then up it to 12 volts if that's the resistor I put in. I've printed these parts, which I'm referring to as the shoelaces, which are the pieces that are going to just cap off that foam on the foot. They're flat 3D prints, but I'm just going to heat them up with a hot air gun and bend them into the right contour so they just fit round. That'll do with a bit of hot glue, so I'm just going to get that painted up gold and stick it on. And also need to stick these in, which I think is just going to uh, be wedged in flat there. 
I've had a slight problem with the knee repulsors in that um, I tried them on 5 volts and they didn't work and when I put them straight on the LiPo they turned green and turned off, uh, which is bad. So I'm currently stripping all the LEDs out and replacing them and wiring them up yeah, to do something sensible. Basically I just couldn't remember what I'd done in the first place. It would have appeared it was wired for something less than 12 and now they've all blown. That looks a bit better, so I've actually wired these all in parallel. They're three volt LEDs, and I've just set my little regulator board to three volts, and that's going to power them. Um, it can either run off a LiPo, which should run quite an amount of time, or I could plug it into a wall adapter. My shoelaces are installed, which I've painted up with a bit of black and silver as well as the gold and glued them on, and I've got the repulsors back in the knees as well. So let's take a look at the body. Here's the upper body. Uh, the faceplate opens, but I don't actually have a motor in it yet, but I do have lights in the eyes which come on. And I've also got these little servos that drive these pieces, um, which are going to be part of the faceplate opening and closing sequence. I've also got the shoulder flaps that lift open, and we've got shoulder cannons which rotate and fire on each side. Um, the electronics for that's rather hung together at the moment, and I'd like to be able to trigger that from a smartphone when I'm exhibiting which I've done a little bit on in the previous episodes. So we're going to have a look at the electronics inside, try and sort it all out and get the smartphone control working again. Most of the electronics for the torso are currently contained down here. These pieces are not glued in. Let's take those out. And we have um, an Arduino hanging around down there with a the voltage regulator. If we go around the back of the suit, There's a piece of breadboard here with some switches to trigger them. Here's that Arduino with a power cable hanging out. So all of this really needs tidying up. I've still got some uh, crocodile clips and things that run down the arms and wires that don't go anywhere. So I might turn this whole thing around and we'll try and sort out the electronics. So I'm going to attempt to pick this whole thing up and turn it round. It is pretty heavy, um, but essentially it's on a workmate that I should be able to grip somewhere. There we go. So now we can see what's going on in the back. So it's a bit of a contrast to the uh, front in that there's no panels at all and the main aim of getting these uh, front parts finished is for photo shoots at DEF CON so but uh, very roughly we've got an Arduino I just pointed out which is currently triggered by this breadboard but in fact there are wires that come out of each arm uh, which are for triggering the shoulders and so on from the joysticks that I've got in each arm so I'm probably going to leave the arms for now and just to concentrate on the body things I've also got these wires here which are actually for light up panels in the front which I've completely forgotten about and those need to be wired into something quite good if I could turn those on and off with a smartphone. I've also got the arc reactor to power which um, I think is what this, these crocodile clips are for um, and the firing again was on the arm uh, joysticks so I've got quite a bit of sorting out to do. The shoulder mechanisms themselves are driven by a servo in here which rotates the whole thing around and also another servo here with this rather large pulley that pulls the shoulder up and down as it turns um, and the wires for that are here and they run all the way around this blue wire and, and that goes to that Arduino there. Um, the servos, well these mechanisms aren't as good as they look, they sometimes jam and bad things happen and they sometimes don't home properly which upsets this servo quite a lot and these are 15 kilogram per centimetre torque servos which are quite hefty uh, which means they sit there chattering away getting very hot so what I actually want to do, the first thing, is to try and get all this working again. Um, but I'm going to have a thing where it actually powers the servo off completely when it's in the home position. So that it doesn't sit there chattering away, getting hot and drawing current. And then I'm going to have a relay, basically, that switches that servo on when it's in use. So that needs to be on another digital output from this Arduino. And then hopefully once that works, and the buttons on the breadboard work, we can then go and put some smartphone control in. I've powered this up now. You might be able to just hear that servo buzzing away, which is the main lifter servo. Let's just have some quiet. Um, if I press a button, it will lift up and, and uh, open and fire the LEDs. You can just see them flashing away there. 
and it shuts again but the servo is really unhappy I don't seem to be, get it, be able to get it to home properly so uh, let's have a look at some relays and things we can use to cut power so saying I was going to use relays, in fact I'm not, I'm going to use ULN 2803 Darlington arrays, which are these chips here, I'm only going to use one of them. And these are basically an electronic switch, so you'll give them, uh, say, 12 volts and ground, so you give them power on the bottom two pins. Then you simply take in a logic level, a low power s signal on the left, so that'll be from the Arduino, and you get a half amp switched version on the right. Um, you can bond all the channels together, so in fact there's eight channels in here each capable of half an amp so if I bond them all together I'll get a four amps capability of switching which is more than enough since the five volt regulator I'm using to provide power to those servos is actually only capable of two amps so I'm going to build this in a little circuit and then we can power those servos down when in the home position right so I've mounted my ULN 2803 on a piece of strip board the blue wire is the signal in from the Arduino that's going to power up those servos so I'll do a high on that pin just before I run the sequence of the servos. On the back, there's lots of interesting solder looking joints, so I've bonded all of these inputs together, all of the outputs together, which will go off to the actual power for the servos. And these pads here are probably excessive, but that takes power into the chip, so that will be the existing positive and negative from the voltage regulator. So we're back in the back of the suit, and we've got that board just there. So that's spliced into the power that goes off to all the servos in the shoulders, both those for raising the shoulders and turning the guns. And it's wired into pin 2 of the Arduino to trigger it, so now nothing happens until pin 2 goes high. And that turns on the power to all those servos, and also the NeoPixels. So I just need to recode the Arduino so it brings pin 2 high before it runs a servo firing sequence, and brings it low again afterwards, and that'll save me a lot of power when it's sat here doing nothing. So now I've recoded the Arduino just to bring that pin high and take it low again after the servo sequence. So now if I press one of the buttons, you can hear the servos grinding there. It's quite unhappy at being held up. It's under quite a lot of strain. But silence again when it goes down and the same on the other side. There we go, and it powers both servos off, and they don't use any power. So there's the first Arduino, it's regulator, and the ULN 2803 uh, Darlington array. And here's another one. So this is another one, exactly the same. It's actually um, a slightly different regulator, another Uno, and another ULN 2803. Um, and this is going to run a whole other sequence, so I can parallel process, essentially, and multitask. So this, these go off to servos that are in the front panel. I've got another connector here to go to the helmet for the NeoPixels in the eyes and we're also going to run the lights which are in the front chest panel so I'm going to spin this around and we'll get this one set up as well and then both of the Arduinos will be controlled from the Photon which means I can trigger the functions from a smartphone. Around the front here we of course have the Unibeam which lights up and it also fires with a specific trigger pin and we've got these panels that open on servos which we need to activate and behind them these gold and red panels, these light up. So I'm going to have a sequence that uh, causes the chest plate and the Unibeam to fire these to open and light up and also we've got NeoPixels in the eyes and also installed some in the shoulders. So I'm going to make a sequence on that Arduino that makes everything light up and happen and then trigger that from the smartphone. So that's all wired in and uh, the Unibeam would normally be on, that's going to be a function where it fires from smartphone control so I still need to wire that in but I've wired in the other lights on the chest, the chest flaps, the eyes and the shoulder lights, the Arduino. So if I hit uh, this switch down here, we should see it all light up, the flaps open and then the lights fade off. There's a bit of a weird thing going on with the servos, you can hear them chattering a little bit. And it does the same thing on the shoulders, um, and that's only when I'm sending NeoPixel data to fade up and down. And it's the same when the shoulder cannons fire, which are also NeoPixels. I don't know why it's doing that. It seems that when you send NeoPixels, it interferes with the servo library or something. Uh, but it's only at the point they fade up and down, so in fact I'm going to leave it.
There we go. So I need to now control all of those things from the smartphone. So let's have a look at that photon again. To do smartphone control, I'm using Photon from Particle I.O. Have a look at part 36 for an in-depth explanation. Essentially, it's this tiny board here, uh, which talks to the cloud, and there's a phone app called Tinker, which is what I'm just going to use to get this going, uh, which allows me to go and toggle pins. So if I do this, you should be able to see that additional LED coming on there when I'm turning on pin 7, so that works pretty well. And I can turn any of the digital um, outs on, I can read digital ins, and I can also uh, read analog and write analog as well. Um, and it is out of the box form, this works with the default firmware and the phone app. So you can write your own apps, your own web pages, you can get these to talk to each other over the internet, and you can program it like an Arduino, and you can program it over the internet. The important thing is that both of these talk to the cloud, they don't talk directly, so I can control this from anywhere on the internet. So uh, for the purposes of taking Hulkbuster to DEF CON, I'm actually going to use Wi-Fi tethering on my phone instead of my home Wi-Fi and have the Photon connect to my phone, both of them connect to the internet. Then I can control this from my phone or I can control it from another Tinker app um, on another phone or another device if I wish to do so. So all I really need to do is wire the outputs of this onto the trigger pins that I've already assigned on those other Arduinos and assign some digital pins there to the different functions and we should be ready to go. So my photon is installed in here and the ground and trigger pins come off, so one for the unibeam, one for each shoulder cannon and one for the sequence that fires the flaps and the things in the front of the suit and turns the eyes on. And those are wired to the two Arduinos that I've already installed there. So now when I turn those digital ons and off from my smartphone, it activates all the functions. So the pins are in input pull-up mode on the Arduinos, which means I have to take those pins low. So I'm actually powering the photon from one of these USB sticks so that I can power it up and set the machine state of all those pins before I connect the Arduinos. Um, so I can set all the pins high and then when I trigger them low, it activates the functions. So let's turn it around and have a look. Okay, so that's all powered up. There's a LiPo for each of those Arduinos and the respective accessories. We've got the Unibeam going. So the first smartphone function is going to be triggering the Unibeam, which is on digital four. So if I take that pin low, we should find the Unibeam powers up and fires. Here we go. And the, so pin seven is all of the flaps and things. So if I take that low and then high again, should stay open for three seconds and close again. And in fact, if I leave that pin low, so if I just toggle it to low and leave it, that will stay um, open and all the lights will stay on for photo opportunities and so on for as long as I leave that pin low. And if I then toggle it again, there's a three second delay. So the minimum you can have those open and on is three seconds and then it closes again. And of course we've got the shoulder pods as well. So those are on digital six and seven. So if I hit, uh, sorry, five and six, so if I hit one of those, that should open and fire and close again. And of course these are on different Arduinos, so they're multitasking, so I can open the flaps at the same time. And that's all good, and I can fire the Unibeam at the same time if I wish as well. There we go, so that all seems to be working. So short of tidying up those bits of electronics inside so I can actually get into it, I'm pretty much done with the preparations for DEF CON. So don't forget to check out that vlog of Hulkbuster in use. I was actually going to put the torso on the legs in this video, but the ceiling's not high enough for it to fit now. So that's going to have to wait till we get to the exhibition hall. So subscribe to my channel for that vlog and more updates on other projects. And also don't forget to check out the social media links in the description to this video.